Hello, biology students. Welcome to our little session on viruses, our next topic in biology class. We're going to be talking about viruses um, before we move into a general discussion on uh, the various kingdoms of life. Now, viruses we're discussing first because they are not alive, uh, and yet they share a lot in common with living things, um, and so they need to be part of this discussion in biology. So viruses uh, generally have two main parts, although they come in many different shapes and sizes. They have a protein coat or capsule, and inside that protein coat they have some sort of genetic information, either be it DNA or RNA. Uh, and so uh, they're made of these organic molecules just like living things are. Uh, and yet, they're not alive. Okay. Uh, they do come in many different shapes and sizes, uh, like we mentioned, but you'll see that they have in common all of these features. So here you can see tobacco, tobacco mosaic virus, adenovirus, influenza, bacteriophage, yet they all feature this protein coat and inside some sort of genetic information here. RNA, DNA, RNA, DNA. Okay, even though they come in different shapes and sizes. So, what are viruses and what are they not? Well, as we mentioned before, again, they are not alive. Okay, and as we mentioned before, they have two main parts, some sort of genetic information, DNA, RNA, enclosed in a protein shell. And what they do is they have to reproduce, but they cannot reproduce on their own, one of the characteristics of life. Uh, and so they have to hijack that cell machinery, things like the ribosomes, uh, in order to make copies of themselves. Remember, ribosomes uh, go through translation, read the RNA, and then make the appropriate amino acids to make proteins. Okay. There are lots of different types of viruses, and I'm sure a lot of these are things you've heard of before. Okay, HPV, perhaps you've heard of. Perhaps you've had a vaccine for HPV. Uh, herpes, chickenpox, smallpox, uh, the common cold, rhinovirus, polio, hepatitis, yellow fever, Ebola, the flu, measles, mumps, rabies, and of course HIV. Uh, you've probably heard of a lot of these different viruses because they affect our lives uh, in many ways and we're always searching for ways to combat them. Here's just a picture of the SARS virus which uh, hit um, when you were young children it was sort of a big deal. Uh, you had people wearing masks, uh, respiratory masks and uh, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Now, if you look at viruses, they have what's called the lytic cycle, and that's how they go about making copies of themselves. So as you can see, uh, if we look at step one, what they do is they'll attach to a living cell, right, normal living cell, and this is slightly out of proportion here. They'll then inject their genetic information into the living cell, and then they'll hijack, again, the copying mechanisms, the enzymes that build proteins in that cell to make virus parts for them. So the cell will make it the virus parts for the virus, uh, and then once they're assembled, they will release, releasing new viruses. And then this process just begins again and continues. And so, again, they're not alive. Uh, they need a living cell in order to reproduce, um, but they're just going to continue to be destructive uh, without a will, uh, without choosing to be destructive. They just want to replicate. Now, some viruses are a little more complex, and they have what we call a lysogenic cycle. Okay, so if you imagine that virus from before, 
uh, it inserts its DNA into the cell but this time instead of having the cell make copies of the proteins encoded for like we see with the lytic cycle instead what we're going to see is it's actually going to embed its DNA into the host chromosome so the host cell is going to treat it just like it's its own DNA uh, and when the, the host chromosome uh, is copied in order to do binary fission that viral DNA is going to be copied as well and so all of the descendants of that bacteria are now going to have the virus DNA in its chromosome okay, and it will continue to be sort of in this dormant state uh, until there's some sort of trigger some sort of stress uh, that will cause that viral DNA to then go lytic shall we say uh, and once that lytic cycle is induced it'll make copies and uh, the cell will rupture, releasing new viruses that will then continue their path of destruction. So some viruses uh, will see just automatically go lysogenic. They don't worry about this lytic phase, things like the flu. While other viruses, okay, they take their time, uh, things like HIV. Okay, That's going to do it for this lesson. Uh, we will do another lesson shortly. Thank you.